how ugly could this get? Well, so far, I mean, there are no signs that it's going to get ugly. Um, what we have had really over the course of the weekend is uh, Seven and I's initial response to Kushtard's approach. Until then, we didn't know the price. We didn't know the terms. We didn't know really anything about this deal. Now we're in a new phase where we now have a price. Um, it's about, uh, in U.S. dollars, close to $15. In fact, that's right where... 7 and i shares are trading at the moment so on friday we had seven, we had 7 and i coming out and saying look this offer is not good enough but we're open to more talks and then uh now on monday morning here in asia we have uh kush tard's response saying um uh, we're, we're willing to talk. Uh, we, we're confident that we can get this deal done. So now sort of, you know, the the, the situation we're in is, is the dance begins, right? They're going to start talking. We don't know how public it's going to be. But at least at the very beginning, we're going to see some action in the shares when the market opens here in about uh, 35 minutes. And uh, given the sort of tone uh, here, uh, probably the shares are going to go up, but you never know. Yeah, and I suppose in one way it gives investors some clarity, right? So this is really about extracting shareholder value as opposed to, you know, the other narrative which was trying to get, you know, look at this 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 business as one that's protected by the state and has, you know, national strategic interests attached. Do we kind of pay less attention to that second part now? Well, those are the key things to watch. I mean, really sort of the protectionist tendencies of uh, Japan that we've seen up until now. Now, a lot has changed. The environment has changed. There are new guidelines on takeovers. Um, there's improved corporate governance. And so the environment has been created for a deal like this to be done, which in fact would be the biggest ever in corporate Japanese history. And then on the flip side, there's sort of the regulatory environment on both sides of the pond. Uh, you, you have a lot of overlap between these two companies given their global footprint, especially uh, that of Seven and Eyes. And so some sort of uh, divestitures is almost certainly going to be necessary. But again, what Kushtard is saying is that those hurdles can be overcome, whereas Seven and I, to a certain extent, um, called out Kushtard saying that it wasn't specific enough in what it was looking at in terms of some of the changes, at least the regulatory changes that are going to have to be made. Really, if this actually happens, this could be the biggest ever foreign takeover of a Japanese company, right? At this point in time, do we have any idea from past acquisitions of what the timeline could look like, what the procedures could look like? Yeah, I mean, there really is no prior example, so it's hard to give a timeline. I mean, if you look at Toshiba, which ultimately ended up in sort of a consortium made up of Japanese investors, I mean, that played out over months and years. Um, this process, we're about, uh, what, uh, three weeks into it uh, so far, and um, it seems to be going pretty normal, uh, but really just hard to say how, how long it's going to take for this to play out.